I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Solenton Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, actionable animism, soul-tending, and how all of those intersect through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a rune cast that I've done for years, focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. The Weekly Rune is now available in full on Patreon.com. Just do a search for Kelly Harrell to find it, and you can find the archive of all past rune casts on my site, soulintentarts.com. If you're not sure what a half-month is or what the runic calendar is, Listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune. It's explained fully at the beginning of every runecast. Thank you to everyone who listens to the podcast, to those who send notes and share their experiences of the runes. That's what it's all about, and I'm grateful for the engagement. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the podcast and the RuneCast possible with their financial support. If you've benefited from the RuneCast, the podcast, or the ton of free articles on the runes, animism, and soul tending on my website, you can show your support through buying my books, which you can find at soulintentarts.com or Amazon, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal or Square, or by contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. You can also subscribe to the paid version of the Weekly Rune there, and thank you for it. We're in the half month of Naudis now, and I want to devote this episode to how the screw has turned for the seasonal attributes of this rune. We all know the winter runes are hard, Hagalaz, Naudis, and Isa. They represent a progression through a challenging time that truly moves from crisis to closure. It starts with blunt change that we just have to roll with, that we have to assess how to meet the needs differently as a result of that change, and how we're going to let our internal space reshape so that we can go forward embodied. You can pretty much sum up the teachings of the entire Elder Futhark in these three runes. That's just how powerful a micro-initiation they bring. But add COVID. Add sweeping social justice reform that is long overdue. Add deep governmental and political reform around the world. So when we talk about Nadis in this seasonal context. We're not just talking about a personal level. This isn't just about our personal crisis and progression to closure, but also a collective reboot that's long overdue. Because the individual and collective reflect each other. One isn't going through something the other isn't ever. That's animism. That's relationship. So when we talk about what's happening with Naldi's right now, We're talking about cultural collapse. We're talking about personal collapse. Collapse is not a new concept. A lot of folks have been talking about it for the last three or four years. And for me, it began with a vision that I had back in 2016. If if I'm honest, it was terrifying. I don't have visions very often. So when I do, they're arresting. I mean, they are akin to like psychological disturbance. And this one in particular was dystopian and it came with a version of the world and super bleak feelings about it that were totally overwhelming. For weeks, I was I was just stunned by this. I wrote about it when it happened in my blog and that post is called Death Walking Midgard. I'll include the link to it if you want to see it. But those feelings from that vision of long-term coping with something that will not fix, that's everyday life now, right? I mean, now that, that's just, you know, Sunday. So 
when I dial in on this from a spiritual standpoint, for many folks, this breakdown is touching every facet of their lives and particularly ones that they don't want touched. Nothing is unscathed. And most of the people that I've been talking about, they're expressing it in terms of their spiritual path is falling apart. And that is particularly distressful at any time, at any time. But but it's really stressful now when so many other aspects of life are inconsistent, if not totally broken right now. And I'm not talking about, you know, people who just got here, you know, people who are just beginning a spiritual practice. I'm talking about people who have had solid, consistently supportive and, and, you know, fruitfully yielding spiritual practices for a long time. They're finding that their ways of relationship to their path just aren't working and they're flailing at how to cope with that. I've talked about this in several clips on my Instagram account. You know, people have been coming to me for about seven months in deep distress, saying that their rituals aren't working or they don't work the same way or their cosmologies aren't showing up the way that they're used to, if at all. And I talked about how this is a natural progression of an animistic path. Absolutely everything I've discussed up to this point is business as usual. You know, animism is all about relationships, and relationships don't stay the same. Whether we're talking about your favorite teddy bear from childhood or, you know, your spirit ally who showed up from day one. No relationship in your life stays the exact same over time. So when we look at our rituals and our cosmologies as aspects of our life that we're in continual relationship with, it makes sense that those things change too. They are life force. Our discomfort with that truth is what we're really at odds with. We don't know how to handle the flux. And really, we come by that honestly. Everybody assumes that it happens because they are doing something wrong. They, they develop deep shame about it. That's half the reason people don't come back for follow-up sessions. It's not because the work didn't show up in their lives and it didn't move them. It's because when they can't move it themselves, when they can't shape the relationship themselves, they feel like they've done something wrong and they feel ashamed of it. And with this, I'm watching it happen on Moss. Um, You know, people think that they aren't showing up enough in their rituals or cosmologies or that they did the ritual wrong or that their spirit ally has abandoned them. And they think things like that Because even if they were in no way raised Christian, our cultural Christianization has instilled this idea of the one ritual, the one true ally, the one savior. And it doesn't work that way, especially not when we're out here animisming by ourselves without the support of an entire village that is also engaged in these same relationships, these same spirit relationships. We underestimate just how hard it is to carry an entire spiritual path and tradition alone, but that's what we do. So on my Instagram clips, I've talked about how, yes, that is a natural progression. The fact that our rituals change, our cosmologies change, And yes, when you're feeling actively traumatized, as with COVID, social reform, and for some people just stepping out in public, it's really disruptive to feel like your rituals and your cosmology aren't showing up the way that you're used to. Like everything else is falling apart and then that goes to shit too. And the direction that I'm going with that in this episode is is what's coming up in community now. You know, the fact that it's not just the mundane that is in upheaval right now. And and honestly, sit down for this one. Other is changing too, by which I mean capital O, other is changing. For example, if your lens is an Old Norse perspective, what I'm saying is the way that we collectively weave weird is changing. 
the way that we access and respond to Orlog is changing, as is possibly Orlog itself, and we don't have the updated playbook. Yes, yep, that's what I said. We don't have the new guidelines for how it all works. So we're in collapse personally, culturally, and perhaps multiversally. Whatever the word is that plugs into capital other, that's what's changing. I also want to thank Janet Roper for her part in affirming this for me. Janet is an animist, elder, and excellent communicator. You can find her at JanetRoper.com. And she brought this up in the context of an animal communication session the other day for me. And I had to sit with the place where I have not gotten with the times in my own need for an update. So when I hear people say, my rituals aren't working, I know it's just stress, I can't wait to just get back to how my spiritual practice used to be, used to be is gone. It does not exist anymore. And once we get past the shock of that revelation and let go of the comfort of the habits that have sustained us, we can move on to what will sustain us now and stay flexible to how it continues to shape. We are in the gap. We're not at the place that we're totally, you know, we can put in new routines and we're, we're not at the place where we can understand how to internalize the way weird is weaving at this time. And it could be a really long time before we get there. Nobody knows. But we're not in used to be anymore, and we're not at the destination either. We have to make peace with that. Now these is traditionally thought of as constraint. It's this point where we understand a stuckness that makes where we are uncomfortable, yet we can't move into where we need to be. When folks talk about not these, they always bring up the ritual of need fire, an ancient European practice of running yourself and your cattle through a flame to kill off disease and spirit possession. So constraint and need fire are where most folks go with now these. But when we look at the true translation of need fire, that word dials in the rune meaning ever so slightly. When we talk about need fire, the emphasis is on need as in the English word that means to require something essential in order to sustain. We think it means needing that purification fire to survive the winter, like in this case, literally, to ward off germs going into living in closer proximity with people indoors and to ward off their shadows so that they're not bringing them into the close quarters either. But when we dig into the root of the word need fire, it really translates from the Germanic word not fire, which means rubbed fire. The etymology of the word clues us more into the ritual itself than it emphasizes needing the ritual's outcome. In other words, like for this ritual, the fire had to be rubbed between your very own hands to create the blaze, to like make the spark and make a fire. It couldn't be lit from an existing fire. In fact, all the other fires had to be extinguished so that capital F fire was honored only through this rubbed fire for the sacredness of blessing it to do its job. When you read Nalthese this way, it's not about needing the outcome of the fire at all. It's about creating a sacred elemental relationship with the intention of the transformation that need fire brings. You, flammable materials, intention, fire, that is all. So at heart, we're talking about the act of creating tension being a sacred ritual, sacred tension, sacred tension that burns off what is non-essential, what is not needed so that we can continue in balance. What that means for this, this time of personal, communal, maybe multiversal collapse is it's the time for us to explore our relationship with sacred tension. 
We know what shit tension feels like. We know what drama and the tension of, of trauma feels like. And we, we don't get to just turn those off in favor of the sacred. That, that's part of the human challenge is how we have sublime sacred existence at the same time that we're trudging through really traumatic things in our lives. We don't get to pick one or the other. But to be able to explore personal relationship with sacred tension, we have to open our awareness to what sacred tension means to us personally. And it, it won't be the same for each of us. I can't predict or project what that will be for you. I would really love to hear how it shapes up for you, actually. Take some time to ask how sacred tension can be transformational in your life how you can learn to sit with it in a way that builds you and those around you. And we don't think of tension that way. We think of tension as something that chips us down little bit by little bit. But sacred tension, it can build us. It can be this thing that gives us actual balanced coping skills that we embody. Just like a true need fire, it can't just come to you. It can't just be brought in from some other flame. It has to be ignited through your own effort. It must be invited with specificity, with appropriate space made, with an invitation in the form of a ritual. Sacred tension has to be created with the intention of transformation. It's only transformative under these circumstances. Otherwise, it's just regular old tension. And we may not know what the transformation is. I would wager that we cannot know because it's not here yet. That part of weird has not come into play yet. And the way that other is is shape-shifting right in front of us, and, and we all feel that, the collapse of life as we've known it, We just can't know what the transformation is, but we still have a role in making sure that it happens. So what is yours? What is your role in sacred tension? What needs to be burned off in need fire for you to not keep trying to make old rituals and life habits work? What sacred tension can you sit with in the gap between the old And what comes next? In Runic Book of Days, I included a challenge for each rune. Like, this isn't about it being upright or reversed. It's it's just the existence of everything has, in its most positive and uplifting message, a challenge for us. And the challenge of Naldis is to consider what needs are filled by not changing. What is at risk if we don't change? And the half-month affirmation for Nautis is, From the middle, I see myself on all sides. All sides of the collapse. I wrote that three years ago. It's a little creepy how that stuff still comes back and is relevant. But for real, the version of you that is on the other side of this collapse is worth the effort of taking sacred care of the version that is you now. Whatever that means. However it takes shape in relationship to sacred tension. Thanks for listening. If you have questions or insights about working with the runes in season, or you just want somebody to bounce your ideas off, feel free to email me at kelly, that's K-E-L-L-E-Y, at soulintentarts.com, or you can call into the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and various other podcast platforms. And you can learn more about me, Runic Book of Days, and my work by visiting soulintentarts.com or on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird.